In my 2023 beauty rehab plans, I said in that video that I was going to put makeup that I had worn into this box and then every so often when it got full, I think I might have said once a month, but um, we've definitely passed a month at this point. But when it got full, I was going to assess it, see what I had worn, how I felt about it, and do some decluttering. As I said, we're well past a month, and I think I was planning to do it on a monthly basis, so it is definitely time to get in about this box of makeup that I have worn and see if I can get rid of any of it. I have separated this into categories. So over here, we have lipstick, liquid lipstick, and lip pencils. I've got cheek products over here eye products here and a face palette here. We'll do the smallest sections and then we'll leave the lip products for last because that's clearly going to be where the meat is. So first of all this Dior face palette I am definitely keeping. This is what it looks like inside. I'm not a massive fan of lip products in these palettes but I really like the cheek products, the highlight and the eye products so I'll definitely keep the palette for now. If at some point I was to ever finish all of those products and not have touched the lip products, I would at that point declutter it, but I definitely enjoy it as it is. On to the eye products. I'm going to keep this from Urban Decay. It's been discontinued. I did wear it in a video recently and was trying to find it to link it in the description box. It's Midnight Cowboy Rides Again and I will swatch that for you. It's a really really pretty shimmery shade, kind of cool toned, like sort of, there's a sort of pinky mauveness to it but it also just kind of blends with whatever you're wearing goes with most lipsticks so I think it's a really pretty shade to have. This palette here is made up of sort of similar shades. It probably makes sense if you look at how many lipsticks are in this video versus anything else. The eyeshadows that I have been wearing have been neutral to go with the various lipsticks. Now these are Anastasia Beverly Hills. I can't remember the names of them offhand. I will put them across. I'm sure this one's called Pink Champagne. Can't remember about the other two. So I'll put them on the screen so that you know what the shades are. But I will swatch them first of all. So those are those shades. I Again, similar to the Urban Decay, they're really, really pretty shimmery. They're gorgeous, like one and done shadows. Well, these two are. This one I'd probably put something a little bit sort of matte brown just to edge it out a little bit, but really, really pretty eyeshadows, so I'm going to keep those ones. I've got this Morphe palette, so this is the Make and Bank palette, and my friend Lauren actually bought this for me for my birthday a few years ago. It still performs absolutely fine, even though it's coming up, I think, on three years. I think she bought it my, for my birthday in 2020. So it is, it's quite an old palette now but it's still performing and I get a lot of use out of this. If I'm totally honest I feel like I could probably declutter a lot of my eyeshadows based on having this palette. It's got the neutrals that I kind of reach for the most then if I'm doing a colour it'll tend to be a sort of green. So this is kind of my ideal palette, you know it really is me in a palette. And although it's it's Morphe so it's obviously not super high end makeup or anything, the payoff's really good. I don't know if you can see, I've got quite a dip going on in this nude shade and it's because the actual pigment in it is really really good. So although it's just a nude shade it definitely does, you know it blends with my skin but it evens out everything and covers up like I've got a lot of redness. I'm sure you're all bored of me talking about it but I've got like eczema around my eyes and things which means there's quite often some sort of discoloration or you know the remnants of irritation or whatever and this shade is just great for covering that up. Really really gorgeous palette so definitely keeping that one which leaves me with these two products. So I wore this palette yesterday. So this is a Dior Quint. The shade is number 46 Golden Reflections. I feel like this was a limited edition Christmas one. The shades are lovely. I really can't complain. You know, again, we've got one of these nice neutral shades, but it's just okay. Do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not absolutely mind-blowing. I feel like I use these two shades far more than I reach for the other shades because yesterday I forced myself to use that one just to use something a little bit different and I did like it but ultimately these two shades, you know, this is a, I mean it's gorgeous, it's like an olive browny, lovely shade but I'm sure I own that kind of shade in other palettes. You know, the bone shade's fine but it's actually less pigmented than the Morphe one. So yeah, I think I can actually let this go. So that's my first declutter of the video. And then the last eye product I've got here is Estee Lauder and it's their Double Wear Eye Pencil in Coffee and I really like it because it's just a very matte, cool toned brown so definitely keeping 
that one. Those are the eye products. I think I'll just save us some time here and say that I'm not going to declutter any of these cheap products. I really do like them all, so I've got my two hourglass blushes. This one is Incandescent Flash, which is a gorgeous kind of bright pink. This is like my absolute favourite, is Dim Infusion, kind of peachy blush. This one from MAC is called Spring Sheen. I have had this for so long, but it is still going strong. It's a really, really pretty sort of coral with a bit of a gold fleck running through it. I feel like blush never swatches particularly well, but it is so, so lovely. Uh, my beloved Marc Jacobs. I really, really like the Marc Jacobs line. I just feel it was so underrated. I was really sad to see it sort of disappear. And this blush was called Lines and Last Night. So again, I think you can maybe see I've been liking a peachy blush and I think that's probably because my Project Pan blush is such a deep pink. That's when I've been wanting something else. These are the blushes I've been reaching for. The problem I found is that because I've had this box sitting out with stuff that I'd used in it, I've just been picking this stuff back out and using it more than once rather than delving further into my collection. So that's partly why I was like, I need to do this so that I can actually put this stuff away and then have it out of sight and use what's not been used yet. And then this is the last one. So again, another slightly sort of peachy leaning nude blush. Um, this was from the Colourpop Midnight Masquerade Disney collection, the shade Enchanted Mirror. Definitely keeping the blushes. Then I've got my Benefit Dandelion Twinkle Highlight. Again, I've got a highlight in my Project Pan this year, but I just want to check the other ones are all still okay. This was actually in a previous Project Pan, so as you can see, it does actually have pan in it there. So I do actually quite fancy coming back to this and trying to finish it at some point. So I'm going to keep it so that I can do that. I think it'll be really satisfying to completely finish a highlight at some point in the future. So definitely keeping all the cheap products, which leaves me with the lip products. So let's look at the pencils first of all. First of all, I've used my two Patrick Ta lip liners and I have the corresponding lipsticks to them. That's why she's late and she's not from here. And these have 0.36 grams of product in them. So in comparison to, this is just MAC Auburn, this has 1.45 grams of product. You're not getting, obviously it's a slightly different formulation, but you're not getting much actual product in these Patrick Ta lip liners. But I do really, really like them, particularly this one. Um, I don't feel like I've got a lot of lip liners for those sort of orangey reds. So this is one of the few that I do. And then the other lip liner that I've got that goes with the kind of lipsticks that are like She's Not From Here, which is that sort of orangey red, sort of MAC Lady Danger style. This one from MAC, High Energy. Those are the two lip liners that I have. I know work with those types of shades, so I'm definitely keeping both of them. Then the other Patrick Ta that I've got here is That's Why She's Late. So that's more of a classic sort of cherry red. Definitely keeping those two. This one that I picked up here, MAC Auburn. This is one of my absolute favourite lip liners. It looks really quite dark when I've swatched it there, but it kind of just goes with everything. Um, it can lean a bit gingerbread if I want it to. It can go a bit more classic red. Really, really useful lip liner, so definitely keeping that one. This is a Maybelline colour sensation in the shade 140 Intense Pink. I don't own a lot of pink, so I feel like I'm quite happy to just hold on to this one as my sort of pink lip liner. And then I've got some more reds here. So I've got the KVD Beauty red, which I really like actually. This formula is lovely as well. So definitely keeping that one. MAC Cherry, I think I'm keeping this one too. Yeah, so that's getting into a slightly kind of brighter red. I feel like as well with the lip liners, because you can sharpen them, I don't really feel like they expire the same way that other products might. So I don't feel particularly like I have to get rid of them as long as they're performing fine. Then I've got Colourpop Notion here. So that's getting into those deeper shades. This one's a bit of a mess to be fair, but I think... I think what I want to do is keep this for now on its own merit and then maybe once I've gone through a few rounds of this kind of declutter, get like all my lip liners together and compare them colour for colour rather than just on their own as individual if that makes sense. But as an individual, I really like this shade. Again, I like the Colourpop lip liner formula, so I'm going to keep it for now. And then last but not least, Lisa Eldridge Velvet Dragon. And that's kind of going into the sort of gingerbready, sort of orangey reds, but in a sort of a muted orangey red, not like this is an orangey red that's like a Lady Danger bright orangey red. So keeping this one as well. So still only one declutter so far, but 
it's fine. The aim of these is not to have a million and one declutters, it's just to make sure that I am assessing things as I go along and if I discover things that are out of date or turning a little bit or that I just don't love when I'm using them, then I can get rid of them rather than waiting until I'm next doing like a lipstick declutter or whatever. So that's the point of this. I get three liquid lipsticks and I'm just going to save us all some time and say I'm keeping all three. ABH American Doll, Too Faced Lady Balls and Too Faced Gingerbread Man. I did a liquid lipstick declutter not all that long ago so I will link that up if you want to go and watch it but it does kind of mean the ones that have made it through are ones that I really like and I do absolutely love these three so definitely keeping them. So that leaves us with lipsticks to declutter. Now I very recently did a MAC lipstick declutter which I will link up if you have not seen that. So the lipsticks that are in here that are from MAC survived that declutter and were then worn and placed in the box. So let me pull them out because I feel like none of them will be going. Okay so I've got Lady Danger, Chili and Morange. Three of my favourites. So Morange is your bright orange that I was talking about that that Patrick Ta lip liner would be my one that would go with. Lady Danger is the same. This is an amplified, this is a matte and then Chili is like gorgeous gingerbready shade. So definitely keeping those three. Speaking of that video I think I'm going to do another one of them with my NARS lipsticks. So I think what I'll maybe do is take these out of this video. I will put them aside and they will come up in their own video. I think what I want to do is do that style video for lipsticks that I have you know, quite a few from one brand is do it as a brand overview and declutter and then once I've considered them within the brand to do them through the box and consider them as individuals. Basically my idea is that this will whittle it down theoretically, realising we've only decluttered one thing today but there's time yet, one of these might go. Hopefully to sort of whittle it down that way and then at the end of the year be left with, you know, however many and say that I've got 20 red lipsticks that I have made it through as individuals that I like but then comparing them against each other within their own category at the end of the year and crowning the best of the best. That's kind of the plan here but yeah I'm going to take these three out of this video and put them aside to go into my NARS lipstick video. So that leaves me these guys. So straight away there's a few I know that are not going. This one from Clay Depot is so beautiful. You can see I've kept it in the box because the box is beautiful. This is what the actual lipstick looks like so it's so so pretty in terms of packaging and then it's just a really sort of easy to wear coral shade so I'm definitely definitely keeping this one. I am in a kind of similar vein actually. This is one of my favourite lipsticks that I own and it is the Gucci in Lucy Dark Orange. I quite related these lipsticks actually. You know the, the Gucci is obviously a lot darker but they are both in a sort of similar family. So definitely keeping those two. I feel like the ones that I'm definitely keeping are the ones in the boxes. <laughs> uh, so there's a bit of a theme there. So I've got my Guerlain Rouge G1830. This is quite similar to Matte Chili in a way, but it's one of my absolute favourite lipsticks. So it's a red, but it's a kind of gingerbready. So it's this slightly orangey red, but in a muted orange way, not in a bright orangey way. Kind of brownie, orangey. Not a classic red, but super, super beautiful. And I find just with my, I mean, you can see how these three kind of all tone in. That's the kind of shades that I find most flattering are ones with a sort of orangey red. I think having red hair and brown eyes and whatever, you know, I think that that suits me, that kind of colour family. So definitely keeping that one. This one I'm definitely keeping, my Guerlain Rouge G number no. 3. This is a nude. This was in last year's Project Pan, so you can see how much of that I have used. And... I would like to, I like using this anyway so I wouldn't be, I'm not only keeping it because I'd like to come back to it but again I feel like I'd maybe quite like to come back to it at some point in a future project pan and I'd maybe quite like to actually try and see if I could finish this at some point so definitely keeping that one. This one is Pat McGrath Fever Dream and it's a matte but it's kind of a slightly, slightly more sort of corally shade so keeping that one again surprise and then the last box lipstick that I am keeping is my Game of Thrones Urban Decay White Walker shade beautiful dark shade look how gorgeous that is so yes definitely keeping that so we'll put the ones in the boxes aside and that leaves these guys so uh, I definitely want to keep Patrick Ta She's Not From Here which is my orangey red probably 
One of those ones I have, MAC Lady Danger and MAC Morange, and you probably don't need all of them, but I really like that kind of shade, so I'm definitely keeping that one. Then next to that I will swatch, this is That's Why She's Late. Now, I love the colour of this. It's so beautiful when I swatch it, but you can kind of see there that it's managed to smudge even from swatching it. I find this a really smudgy formula. I love the shade. I think it's really beautiful. But I feel like every time I wear this, I'm sort of on watch because I know that it moves around so easily. But I do think it's a beautiful, beautiful shade. I feel like basically I want to keep this for the colour because the colour is stunning, but I would like this colour in... It's strange because they're the same lipstick theoretically, but this formula is so much more, so much more matte basically. It moves less, it's still really creamy and comfortable, but it, it stays where you put it, whereas this one emigrates all over the face if you're not careful, but the colour is beautiful. So I think I might keep it and then at the end of the year can compare all my reds to each other. And if I had another red that was this beautiful sort of deep, like delicious shade, I could get rid of this one, but the colour is just stunning. Another red that I've got is my Tom Ford. This is from the Lips and Boys collection and it is the shade Dominic. This is a really pretty colour again. It's a bit brighter than that Patrick Ta. I feel like on camera actually the Patrick Ta looks brighter, but that's certainly deeper in real life than this one. Like this is more of a cherry. This is still quite a cherry red, but quite a deep cherry. This is really pretty and I kind of hate to see it, but I think it's going off. And I think by the time I put this in a box, check all my other ones, go through this process with them and come back to them at the end of the year, this will be off altogether. Quite disappointing obviously, although it's one of the smaller Tom Ford lipsticks, it's still expensive and it's Tom Ford and it's also like one of the newer ones in my collection. It's still very old, I think I got it in 2016. It's definitely out of date and I probably shouldn't be complaining about it, but I went on my first Beauty No Why in 2018, so maybe I got this in 2017 actually. It was one of my last purchases before I was like, I need to go on a No Why. So it's one of the ones that still feels new-ish in my collection in comparison to certain other ones that I've had for longer that have not yet gone off. So I feel like this would put me off ever buying another Tom Ford until my collection is way whittled down from what it is and I would know that I'd be able to get the use out of it before it would go off. I think I sadly need to admit this one has gone off and I just need to part ways with it. Another one that has gone off and it kills my soul is this one from L'Oreal. So this was called 406 Zoe's Red. They never actually released this in the UK. I had to get this in New York. It's one of my absolute favourite shades, but it has definitely turned. That is what it looks like. It's really, really pretty, but it's had its life, unfortunately. So I think I just need to face up to that and get rid of that one. This one's actually older than that one. This is from L'Oreal as well. It's one of the Le Matte. A collection, sort of like a long crayon as you can see. I think this was called She's So Matter of Fact or something like that. It was some kind of play on matte. Uh, and this is a really, really pretty sort of neutral pink shade and it's still going strong. So I'm going to hold on to that. Another one that I'm going to get rid of is this. So again, this is another L'Oreal one and this shade was called no Cage. Not the most flattering shade on me. I actually, I think I got this for my birthday during the lockdown when testers weren't a thing anymore and I'd sort of picked it based on, I don't know, something I'd seen online or whatever, but it's just not very flattering on my complexion, so I'm going to get rid of that one. Then here I've got the Bourjois Rouge Edition number 14. Again, this is quite a pretty shade, but I've had it for quite a while and it's probably, it's pretty, but it's just not absolutely glorious. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's nice, but it's just not beautiful, so I think I'm going to get rid of this one. Then I've got a Marc Jacobs lipstick here. This is the shade Boy Gorgeous. Quite old in my collection, but still seems to be performing. Yeah, see, I think that's prettier than that is, so yeah, I'm going to keep a hold of this one. It maybe slightly kind of ties in with that as well, so it gives me, gives me a vibe of my beloved Zoe's Red that I've had to admit defeat with, so I'm going to keep the Marc Jacobs. Then this is another Urban Decay. This was from the Alice in Wonderland collection and it is the shade Erasmus. So this is more of a classic red, quite a bright one. 
you know, I do, I, I don't hate it, but again, kind of similar to what I was saying about this, it's nice, but it's not groundbreaking in my collection. And I think in terms of the packaging, like I look at that and I think about Lisa Eldridge Velvet Ribbon or even like sort of MAC Ruby Woo, it's that kind of shade. And I would pick up those lipsticks before I would pick up this one. So I think I'll get rid of this one, which leaves my maybe. But as I say, I think I'm going to keep this for now and then try and dupe the actual shade of this within my collection. So this is what I've kept. These three are going to the side and I think there will be quite a few going in that NARS video so do watch out for it. And this is what I'm getting rid of. So I know it's not been the most super ruthless declutter but that's not really the point of this exercise. It's just to whittle things out as they come up so that what I've got at the end of the year can then be more manageable to try and declutter within its own categories and whatever. Because at the start of this year I've got well over 100 lipsticks so I feel like if I can whittle down I've knocked out one, two, three, four, five here. If I could do that every time I do one of these box declutters by the end of the year I'll have knocked that down hopefully you know even if it's to 80 lipsticks or whatever that then if I break them into colour categories I can declutter within those colour categories that way so I'm pleased it's uh, five lipsticks and one eyeshadow palette that's gone they would definitely still be in my collection if I wasn't doing this so uh, I'm pleased that I finally kind of started doing this so I'm going to put these into storage force myself to use what I've not used yet and hopefully have another one of these box declutter videos for you quite soon and try and do them a little bit more regularly going forward. So thank you very much for watching this one. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Bye!